This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated streaming service dedicated to streaming and elevating great cinema from all around the globe. You can get a whole month free at mubi.com HOC 2023. I think what the documentary will always represent is your intent. If I go into something with a very clear narrative, that will show very clearly. But if you're seeking answers, that will also come across. I also have a problem with the world where we are putting everything into a box. Where we are going that you only play who you are, you only make a film what you've seen. That's not what it was supposed to be. It's coming from the right place because people have felt abused in that in some way. But these boxes do scare me. I feel like humanity is kind of being brainwashed into isolation and I think human beings need to be touched. I think that's a stronger vitamin than all the tablets we can take because what a good hug or just a pat on the back can give you is essential. Ma'am, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's a, such a big pleasure. Uh, I am the biggest fan. I, uh, I mean, I, you know, I was a kid when I even saw films like Shabd and Thief Patti, but even then, uh, you know, I mean, probably should have seen Shabd as a kid though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think it was an adult film also. <laughs> must have been, must have been. Yeah. But uh, maybe that's why I was seeing them. <laughs> but, uh, but no, House of Secrets uh, was, you know, such a revelation. Uh, and of course, not just for me, I mean, it was almost like a pop culture milestone for, for the recent uh, Indian content wave. Uh, because from there, this whole new wave of docu-series also has started, uh, which is, you know, at least a very refreshing change from all the other stuff that is happening. At least there is a lot of experimentation and novelty. And at the same time, all the documentaries that are getting made, right? Lately, which are going to Cannes and Oscars. How do you see that? How do you see that this whole new wave of documentaries and docu-series that is happening in India? I think documentaries from India have always been making a mark, you know, for a while. It's not just, actually can't be credited at all to House of Secrets, but in popular kind of culture, um, also the whole new style of documentary filmmaking. Also, India was is not a documentary culture, yeah. you know. So for us, documentary actually is feels like news really yeah, heavy, yeah, information based. Yeah. Uh, we've not we had not yet warmed up to it. I think so. Unfortunately, a lot of these things also that time there were no platforms and stuff. So a lot of the documentaries that went to festivals didn't get, you know, released for the public. Platform. Yeah. Yeah. So. It went a bit unnoticed, but I think we are making such a huge mark now in yeah. documentary uh, making. And for me, actually, House of Secrets came totally out of the blue. Mm. I had never thought of making documentaries, but I've always been open to keeping on changing either mm. my genre or something like, mm. you know, I'm open to doing something new and adventurous. Um, but see, when this case happened, I actually said it at that time flippantly that, you know, they're not reporting what really happened in this case. Mm. I wish I get to make a, you know, investigative documentary on this. Okay. And then one year later, I got a call from Netflix saying that the international team was coming down, whether I wanted to meet them. Okay. So just with this one thread of thought. You had expressed the interest to somebody. To nobody, to myself. Oh, manifestly. <laughs> this was totally like out of the blue. They said, I don't know whether, you know, you're the right one for this, but this is, they're coming and would you like a meeting? Mm. And I, you know, picked up that thought and I was like, yes, I actually have something I do want to make a documentary okay. on. So I met them, I presented it to them and then things moved really fast. They like really uh, liked, um, mm. I mean, they wanted to explore this case. They thought it had a lot of potential. Mm. Um, Along the way, we discovered how to do this mm -hmm. because it was being done for the first time for a platform in India. Mm -hmm. uh, had an amazing, amazing team from Netflix, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to collaborate with. And yeah, just got to collaborate with some amazing, amazing people uh, mm -hmm. on the documentary. A great, great edit team. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rehman did the score, which I think just added another yeah. layer to the whole thing. So, yeah, 100%. So I think when things come together, they do in some magic. I mean, you wish that always. Yeah. 
but it happens sometimes sometimes even in fiction you know like uh, for example i really like tanwar you know it was also about this extremely uh, publicized case but uh, but even in fiction sometimes it can come across so well when you just leave it it does i think uh, for that you need you need a clear take at least right uh, it was a very new case also yeah if you're a director st- you're a storyteller basically you yeah. need a take of why you want to dramatize something which has happened and is so publicly yeah. known you know you need a purpose for it at least that's what i think yeah and uh, as an uh, inspiring filmmaker why said by this is you keep on you know reading so much the the lines between documentaries and journalism are sometimes very blurred right and even in journalism there is still this ongoing conversation about whether or not journalism can be objective right whether there is always some subjectivity and whether the world view of the reporter is reflecting in the reporting do you think that it is possible to make a documentary without the world view of the filmmaker uh, reflecting in it uh, no but at the same time i think what the documentary will always represent is your intent if i go into something with a very clear narrative that will show very clearly and like i when i see a documentary i can see but if you're seeking answers hmm. that will also come across like for me when i was doing burari i was just constantly telling myself that don't build a narrative okay because what happens then that without the moment i build a story that this is what according to me happened that night hmm. which you know the mind is a crazy place so <laughs> the moment we were doing this obviously we all had Some multiple theories yeah. and uh, not only multiple theories at different points i was very sure of a narrative also but i had to take that out of my head constantly and say i still don't know anything because otherwise it will reflect in the way i question somebody right i can easily take an interview to the place where i wanted to go yeah so i went to places which i didn't want to go also just and then i did find surprises there right then led me to the next one and then led me to the next one so the whole process of discovering it like this uh was heartbreaking also uh, yeah. it was a very tough journey even just doing these interviews was not easy yeah as a storyteller i mean i think i learned a lot of lessons which i will bring back into my writing for narrative now right. can you share a little bit of that okay so constantly letting the story play out for what it is your elements within what you've planted need to speak to you okay so discovering like say a new path so as storytellers what happens along the way and i think especially now is your uh, bogged down by a lot of these terms which have come about oh this is a trope this is this this is that we will fall into this this is right. you know all there all these Got words it. which define things yeah the organic process you know or a cliche a cliche works so many times 100%. you know so uh you start censoring that and that kind of starts guiding the way you think and write um whereas you have to just actually trust and just go with what the story needs and that's what i did with yeah. i don't know how to put no, it in more concrete i i understand now. what you're It's saying it's like an idea in the air but yeah. yeah yeah so do you think that for a documentary uh I mean it is very important because for especially a subject like this right i mean maybe for somebody who's making something about a subject that is pretty well known um maybe there is a possibility to structure it in advance for something like this did you have a structure in mind before and or was it only after shooting everything recording the interviews that you thought that okay maybe this is how it can come to well no i think uh, crazily enough so much evolved in this but like the first structure which i had wanted to explore this with is what the structure finally played out okay. so i wanted to do the first day as a spectacle because that's what i remember that day being it was a spectacle yeah uh, and really making you feel a part of that spectacle you know uh, where you know we would where there is a disregard for the people involved you know it becomes 11 and like everything is mumbo jumbo yeah yeah the second was supposed to suddenly get into the family right okay and get to know them as people their aspirations dreams their possibilities their futures yeah. um by name like 
flesh and blood and the third was taking it to a societal level mm. because that was one of the crucial things now where that would go we never knew because mm. we had just started the process so but we just we definitely i wanted a bird's eye view on everything mm. and that in this case through the journeys became turn the lens on us i mean instead of Got them you. turn the lens on us because they were part of us right they they could have been any one of us yeah. in yeah. those circumstances yeah to be making uh, something on a subject like this where again it, it must be so disturbing and it will disturb to watch uh how personally was were you affected by making it well you know it's a crazy thing but the moment your attention goes to something those things start happening to you like you see in life but <laughs> when you're dealing with horror they are the strange things that happen in yeah. you know uh, so i remember our first i thought schedule. you were going to say that when you start focusing too much attention on something then it stops affecting you no 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 <laughs> it kind of comes into your being you know yeah. so uh, i remember our first schedule was i think the most trying for all of us we all had our first set of nightmares that time uh, questions of why are we getting into this it's yeah. it's obviously you know going yeah. to lead us down a very dark corridor yeah. but um then we dis- we ended up our first day of shoot without design was 1st of july 2019 on the first death anniversary the shoot lasted for 11 days we discovered we were 11 people in the team and this 11 like became like a thing oh, but again see the thing is we have to keep questioning everything yeah it's because your attention is on 11 that's why you're seeing it yeah 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 <laughs> you know so uh, yeah i mean like there were some kind of spooky things happen if um if one had to uh, take them seriously uh, it would have affected all of us very badly yeah <laughs> ma'am you know there is always this uh, question of uh, even for example for such like trial by fire right uh, which uh, we were also discussing that another that one reason that that should really uh, i i found it to be really so you know better that the other stuff that is being made is because it wasn't sensationalizing the crime or the tragedy of the victims in any way you know like it also did not really focus on the, the fires that were actually happening and people burning in the hands of a lesser director or somebody who was more just interested in sensationalizing it wo the scene pakka hota ki wo fire mein jhulas rahe log so how does one make sure that you do not end up sensationalizing the tragedy or you do not end up you you the answers in one of your questions just before this that the filmmaker will reveal themselves in the material right so it's it's what you enter the material with you know that who can make sure of that ha huh. you know if if a person sees that thing like that that is how they are going to represent it so the intent of the filmmaker will always be there in the material that in the content that you see yeah so uh, which and i also really really like trial by fire mm. i thought it was very very correctly done and i think when done like this it's kind of a closure to a collective pain that happened that went kind of unresolved and also these things get lost but these are huge mm. events that we really need to note for a multiple reasons yeah you know but times are moving so fast that you forget but there is this pain trapped and i know a lot of parts of delhi which had that pain trapped yeah which you know when they saw trial by fire and they saw these people relentlessly fight for so many years yeah you know it it gave them close so it did touch a true chord yeah you know so when you're retelling things that's where you have to go i'm sure filmmakers do try and go there but you don't always succeed yeah 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 and ma'am how do you see uh, i don't know if uh, you are very active on reels on instagram but uh, i'm a very <laughs> i watch very sometimes but then i get a dict- i i get stuck there so i'm scared of it actually <laughs> okay okay <laughs> because i watch like anything then ek baar shuru hota to fir wo and then i start getting bothered about my algorithm i'm like why are these things showing up <laughs> उटर 
house secrets which like you know make are making fun of the lalit character you know and all of that so uh, you know i mean how of course you can't afford avoid that but how do you feel when you see stuff like that i think also secrets is my most memed out work ever <laughs> 100% but yes. it was the most popular also <laughs> yes so uh, okay what i did see so even within the team we were all dealing with a lot of dark stuff okay uh, especially during the editing phase the editors were stuck in their homes we used to zoom and talk to each other uh, so f- for us to get through the process we had to bring humor into the picture right okay so in a way i some memes i did see i have not probably seen everything but i have seen quite a few i think the disturbance shows i'm not offended by the fact because it's a genuine reaction to the content that they watched mm-hmm. if somebody takes the pains to sit down and even express their fear mm-hmm. i think it's 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 a good reaction to the material that it's affected them i mean i could see that in a lot of the memes that it came from a space of disturbance or i know what you're or, saying or being pushed to an edge at some level yeah because it came pretty close to the bone i could see yeah i'm still kind of making sense of what they'd see yeah so it is kind of uh, yeah nobody can ever expect us yeah. expect something like this so i think humor always has layers so you have to see where it's coming from so, that's yeah. true that's true when did you start becoming interested in cinema were you a film kid a very long time ago <laughs> <laughs> were you a film kid no okay so i i don't have one of those stories where at 4 years old i knew i was going to make films no right. i was finding my way through it but now when i look back i think films were an organic part of my life uh, my dad was in the army we were posted every 2 years to a new city one is we saw two films through my childhood two films every week oh. one hollywood film and one bollywood film okay. in the army theaters that was a big occasion so i hardly ever missed it unless it was an adult film when i was a child or mm. i had exams or some silly thing like that mm. so that was part of our social life mm. uh secondly i think every time i went to a new school which was every two years uh that's how i made friends i told them stories and mm. i lured them <laughs> so i think that was the basic thing otherwise i had a interesting journey through trying to be a, first giving my iit exams and trying to be an architect and then ending up in economics honors and then finding my way to media so right 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 and uh, did you how was your experience uh, studying at delhi university do you think that that was in any way influential in kind of driving you towards because i am from du i know how much of an influence it has had on me and uh, it is huge huge right yeah so um I always went to a co-ed in my school. Okay. So the prospect of going to LSR I was like okay interesting I've never been like in just a girls uh, this thing uh school or college. Um I wasn't sure how it's going to pan out. Mm-hmm. But I think that was really the best thing that happened to me. Uh because yeah. it was the time of you were you know forming into your who you will become and uh I think I met some amazing women uh got introduced to some amazing concepts um had some of the greatest most nurturing friendships which still are very much part of my life okay. um delhi as a city was a character through those years um mm. in lots of ways too much oppression and since i was in a girls it just became magnified for me yeah that oh i can't move anywhere the way everywhere people are looking it's inappropriate you know you literally i have memories of feeling like literally hunted down so that's why when i finished college i was like i need to go to a city where i can you know feel free right right so bombay was a concept i had been to bombay only but for holidays so hmm. i took a chance and i uh, got i applied for social communication media at uh, safai college okay which again was an amazing course so yeah and that there, is my <laughs> and are there any specific films or roughen makers that really affected you to the point of you feeling like you know this is the kind of stuff that i want to make 
so a very small part of my subconscious was very cowboy okay. <laughs> my dad was uh, obsessed with cowboys and uh, i think one of some of the first books i read were louis l'amour's oh. and uh, saw a lot of cowboy films clint eastwood i remember watching a lot of films yeah. of good bad ugly magnificent so seven sure. yeah um so when i came to sofias the concept of cinema completely blew my brains <laughs> you know okay. the the uh where all it can Kyunki go kyunki aap bilkul dekh rahe honge body cinema dekh rahe honge yeah yeah and we saw surreal surrealist uh, right. films ocean the loo and but i think the film that kind of allowed me the most or inspired me the most was hiroshima mon amour oh one of my favorite films as well it's because it was so sublime and it was so big in what it was saying and like i could connect it to so many things uh at a time when i was still learning how to express uh my reaction to films you know yeah um but i think that was a landmark for me and there onwards started exploring watching you know various filmmakers from all over the world and saying oh god like i haven't even like seen 5% yeah. of and i will never what possibly 5% itni yeah. sari but ma'am okay. how yeah like your journey has been so interesting i mean you i was just reading about you yesterday and you have worked in television uh, before that and then you made films like shabd and teen patti and then you made parched in a house of secrets how do you now like kind of see your journey and uh, and like if there is one thing that you could tell your younger self uh, what would that be that will be fun and adventurous <laughs> <laughs> and very challenging very challenging but uh, yeah i mean but you're going to live an interesting life you'll meet interesting people right that's what i would tell my younger self <laughs> but uh, what now it's going to be as unpredictable as it's been so far yeah. um because i don't have a genre or a story that i'm retelling um hmm. so i want to experiment with as many types of telling a story as many ways one can um last i did a anthology film called tell it like a woman yes so my fi- which was a short which again was hmm. such an interesting format yeah because i decided to do a short very differently from doing a long format i said what does you know this format uh it has to be different so i did a lot yeah. little bit of abstraction in the way i told my story um yeah i mean i want to work all over the world and do all kinds of things yeah <laughs> wherever the opportunity is uh yeah, yeah. oh so i mean i was just telling you about shabd Uh, yeah, me be sure that seen it as a kid but again one thing that i do remember as uh, embarrassed as i am to admit, admit it is the the love scene in the film right and from there to even parched you know intimacy has been such an such an important part of your films and you have also spoken about especially in with respect to parched how important showing sexuality and sexual desire and intimacy was um how do you and i do feel like even with shop uh, there was a gentleness to to that one scene and also you know uh, sholo si sholo si which is still that that song which kind of uh, uses sensuality in just the right way um how does one get that right how does one know how to not again sensationalize uh, and just do it for the sake of it while actually evoking something that really personal and and true from it so f- again i would say your relationship with an emotion as a person will always be there in the way you depict it mm-hmm. but um for me i constantly want to give as many reinforcing um images and moments of sexuality because i think it's one of the most beautiful and i do believe it is a very spiritual act Mm. um so i want to give as many and i think there is my perspective obviously which comes across uh, in the way i uh, depict those scenes but just conversations of sexuality whatever sparks it and just honest conversations about sexuality to just 
take the you know the cloud hmm. out of it uh, is super important and for me also touch is a big theme as a filmmaker hmm. because uh, in my own head i am i feel like humanity is kind of being brainwashed into isolation and i think human beings need to be touched i think that's a stronger vitamin than all the tablets we can take because what a good you know hug or just a pat on the back can give you yeah. um is essential so that's why i guess mixing my perspective on touch and you know sensuality comes across <laughs> yeah hopefully in no, uh, in these really scenes really yeah does. and especially in parts uh, you know uh, it was we no pun intended but touching yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um ma'am uh, have you worked with intimacy coordinator was there an intimacy coordinator in first no so recently when they they was in that time the concept also didn't yeah, exist yeah it wasn't there i think somebody had mentioned when i was doing parts that in the west now they use an intimacy yes, corner yeah yes. but uh, no so i think i'm qualified now for an intimacy <laughs> <laughs> you you yourself can handle yeah, it yeah yeah again what helps the comfort levels the most is conversation right so you know all the people key people involved because it's a huge ask for everybody to be you know doing this so it has to come from a place of honesty i mean even if one had to uh, film something violent it has to be you know a conversation between the crew that's making it is super important sure. in h- hitting all the edges and talking about all the discomforts yeah. uh, involved but do you do you feel like these conversations are important it's good that these things are these conversations are happening now about how intimacy is being represented on screen and how violence is being represented it's good but i also have a problem with the world where we are putting everything into a box right where we are going that you only play who you are you only make a film what you've seen and right. that's not what it was supposed to be but i think it's coming from the right place correct because people have felt uh, abused in that in some way mm-hmm. um but that's also a mirror that we have been insensitive mm. in the way we've told stories probably hmm. um but these boxes do scare me uh got it you know there there is yeah if something is comes to light i feel a loss of something also in a lot of ways um hmm. but i guess yeah we have to knock over all the sides before we reach a balance yeah. somewhere yeah. yeah what kind of cinema personally fascinates you and like is there a particular kind of film that you really want to make but haven't been able to until now i don't know like i know pretty like mostly about 10 minutes into the film i know whether it has to be human and <laughs> i don't know how to explain what kind of cinema because i don't again don't have a genre that i look out for right. like there are people who love action or whatever yeah. i think at at the base of whatever it is it has to be a human story in some way that attracts me um what was the other question and just you know is there a kind of film that you haven't been able to meet yet but there are two genres which i have two three <laughs> that I've been wanting to make uh, action horror. Oh, nice! But again, what is the story? And um, do you have anything written? Which no, but I'm working uh, on a horror with uh, oh, really interesting people. Um, again, tracking what is fear and like I don't know where it'll land, but we'll see. Okay. So yeah, and I also want to do action. I want to explore action in a different way. nice nice ma'am uh, on on a final note uh, i would love to know and this is very different from the conversation that we have had until now but what does happiness mean to you what does happiness mean to me yeah, and this is a question i always end with uh, just uh, it's always interesting to hear what how everyone how different people uh, view happiness but what is it for you uh i can tell you things that give me happiness <laughs> food <laughs> the weather people yeah. and if we combine the best of the three yeah, right. together in one moment yeah but 
for me the ultimate zen happiness is on set <laughs> yeah because i really relish when i'm on set and that's my favorite part of making a film being on set mm. what i love is that in that one moment there are so many artists collaborating on your vision yeah and when you hit it when you hit it right no mm. yeah <laughs> you just want that again it can be the most beautiful <laughs> amazing beautiful amazing way. and and you know it you just know it it just it does tell you in that moment are there any specific things that you do when you're maybe not feeling your best and make just some activities that help you always feel better i laugh oh, really? mostly uh, yeah so at least for two of my films my assistants used to say she's laughing too much means somebody's fucked up oh, shit. <laughs> so yeah be careful of my laughter <laughs> oh, be laughing the entire interview <laughs> sorry it's kind of nice <laughs> yes and so and it no i laugh and i try and engage with whatever it is and get it out uh of the way and at home the reading uh i actually really do unwind i watch mindless things <laughs> okay that's when probably sometimes i get stuck on reels and then i realize an hour has passed yeah <laughs> yeah probably no yeah. escape make a mechanism more than anything yeah but you're okay with recently i also films. binged bling empire oh confession <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay okay yeah but so do unwind so all right yeah thank you so much man thank you and said thank you so much man man what man <laughs> Uh, thank you so much ma'am thank you uh, this was such an honor this uh, was fun meaning to speak to you for such a long time and uh, and yeah thank you so much thank you so much for uh, for the films that you've made and and for the show and i really really uh, always look forward to the to the work that you do thank you and so looking forward to especially to the horror film now yes <laughs> but thank you so much for doing this thank uh, you and this was being an adult with young the cinema from the young the cinema podcast thank you so much for joining me guys Hi guys, thank you so much for checking out our episode with Lena Ma'am. This is personally one of my favorite episodes from the podcast. There is so much to learn from Lena Ma'am and she's one of the kindest, one of the warmest people that I've met. So thank you so much for watching and uh, please let me know in the comments ki aap logon ko episode kaisa laga. Uh please let me know whatever feedback you have. I would love to work on myself and I would love to improve the podcast as much as possible. Uh and also ye bhi bataiye ki aap log kaun se directors aur chahenge ki hum log podcast pe leke aaye and I'll, I'll try my best to invite them to have them on the show. Um and now this episode is in collaboration with Mubi to tell you a little more about Mubi Mubi is one of our favorite streaming platforms and Mubi creates and curates films bringing cinema and its diverse voices to people from all over the world from iconic directors to emerging auteurs there is always something new to discover with Mubi each and every film that you see is hand selected by its team of curators you can discover the best of cinema at your fingertips streaming anytime anywhere plus with Mubi Go You can also get a free cinema ticket every week to watch the latest releases on the big screen. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com/hoc2023. That is m u b i dot com slash h o c two zero two three for one whole month of great cinema for free. And also, if you're somebody who enjoys crime dramas and documentaries, I have an excellent recommendation for you to check out on Mubi. It's one of my favorite films of all time. by one of my favorite directors of all time the christof kislovsky film called a short film about killing it's a deeply introspective film about the roots of crime and violence and tries to examine how and why some people end up on the path of crime it is an affecting often discomforting film with a lot of filmmaking ingenuity that will compel you to sit back and rethink your perspective on crime and punishment mubi currently has a wide range of films from the filmography of kislovsky and i would strongly urge you to check out as many of them as possible you would not regret it